My name is Tim Sutinen from PrivacyProShop.com. Recently, I specked out a true NAS box for myself for storing the footage of these YouTube videos. And that, of course, brings up the topic of how to configure your Z pools so they perform properly. I figured a quick tutorial on our experiences with real life ZFS storage performance would probably help a lot of folks. My IT services company, Sutinen Consulting, has been building and supporting ZFS storage servers since 2010. If you have a ZFS project you need help with, our contact info is in the description. A lot of people buy or build a TrueNAS server with six or eight 7200 RPM hard drives, put the disks in a RAID 5 or RAID Z1 configuration, then they wonder why the server is really slow when they run a virtual machine or two off of it. The extremely simplistic answer is that the server doesn't have enough IOPS, and write IOPS in particular. IOPS stands for Input Output Operations Per Second. In the ZFS world, that means you need more VDEVs. ZFS makes virtual devices or VDEVs out of physical devices. A VDEV could consist of a single hard drive or single SSD, a mirror, which is called RAID 1 in other systems, RAID Z1, which is called RAID 5 in other systems, which offers single parity, RAID Z2, which is called RAID 6 in other systems, which is double parity, and ZFS even offers triple parity in a VDEV called RAID Z3. Here is a riddle to make a point about the importance of VDEVs. A Z pool with a single hard drive VDEV has as many write IOPS as a Z pool with two drives in a mirror VDEV, which has as many write IOPS as a Z pool with five drives in a RAID Z1 VDEV, which has as many write IOPS as a Z pool with seven drives in a RAID Z2 VDEV. Say that 10 times straight. Whew. But you get the idea. The number of VDEVs dictates the write IOPS of your system. So, how do you make write IOPS faster? Simple. Add more VDEVs to your Z pool. Do you want to double the IOPS of your single VDEV Z pool? Add another VDEV. Triple? Add two more VDEVs. Quadruple, add three more VDEVs. So, you have six drives. How would you configure them for best speed and acceptable fault tolerance combination? Here are some examples. Fastest. You could make them into a six VDEV striped Z pool, which is also called RAID 0 in other systems, with the capacity of all of the drives combined. The Z pool reads and writes at the combined IOPS of all of the six drives. However, a striped Z pool is usually a really bad idea as the loss of one of the drives will cause you to lose all, your, all of your data on all of those drives. Second fastest, a three VDEV Z pool with three mirror VDEVs, which are also called RAID 10 in other systems. It yields 50% of the total disk capacity. It can tolerate the loss of one drive in each one of the three mirrors and writes at the combined IOPS of three of the drives. Third fastest, a two VDEV Z pool with two three disk RAID Z1 VDEVs, which is also called RAID 50 in other systems. It yields 66% of the total disk capacity, can tolerate the loss of one drive in each of the RAID Z1 VDEVs, and writes at the combined IOPS of two drives. And then slowest, and I have two examples. First example, a one VDEV Z pool with six disk RAID Z1, which is also called RAID 5 in other systems. It yields 83% of the total disk capacity. It can tolerate the loss of one drive. And its write IOPS are at the speed of only one of the drives. And the second example of the slowest ones would be a one VDEV Z pool 
with a 6-disc RAID Z2, which is also called RAID 6 in other systems. It yields 66% of the total disc capacity. It can tolerate the loss of any two drives. And its write IOPS are at the speed of one of the drives. So, what do we learn from this? For highest IOPS, have as many VDEVs as possible. Those six drives could be split to six striped VDEVs, three mirror VDEVs, two RAID Z1 VDEVs, or one RAID Z1 or one RAID Z2 VDEV. Realistically, the highest IOPS option in most cases are the three mirror VDEVs in the pool. Mirrors are also the safest option for hard drives larger than two terabytes, but more on that later. Then there is a special kind of VDEV that will be helpful in some situations, and it's called a log device. Sometimes they call it an S-log, which stands for separate log device. If you have a lot of synchronous writes, then a separate low latency log device will speed things up dramatically. You can figure out if you need a separate log device by using the zilstat command line utility. ZFS also has another special VDEV called cache. That is used for read caching and in most cases should only be used after you can't add any more RAM in your system. That covers the VDEVs relating to the IOPS part. Next, I'll cover some best practices relating to ZFS systems that we have learned over the years of building them. Do you use VPNs for added privacy? Did you know that a VPN simply trades your ISP knowing your browsing habits to the faceless VPN company knowing what you do on the internet? Wouldn't it be nice to have a zero trust VPN provider? A VPN provider that has no idea who you are or what your true IP address is. Now you can with Onion Routed LokiNet VPN Mode Exit Nodes. LokiNet offers IP address anonymity due to Onion Routing, decent browsing performance, and good video and audio streaming performance over Low Latency Anonymous Routing Protocol, or LLARP. Check out LokiNet VPN Mode Exit Nodes provided by PrivacyProShop.com. Give it a try for just $1. PrivacyProShop.com accepts Monero, Bitcoin, and other cryptocurrencies for truly anonymous payment. You can pay with credit cards too. And then to the best practices. Load up on RAM. With ZFS, you can get more IOPS by adding as much RAM in your system as you can afford or that your server will take. ZFS buffers writes and caches reads by default. So, the more RAM, the faster writes as they get written to RAM instead of directly to disk. ZFS cache is called ARC, or Adaptive Replacement Cache, and gets reset at reboot. So after a reboot, your ZFS storage server will be much more sluggish until the ARC fills up with the correct files. That's one reason why ZFS admins don't like reboots. Avoid using RAID Z1 with large spinning hard drives. That's anything greater than two terabytes because there's a chance that another drive in your pool will fail before a replacement drive has been completely rebuilt. The rebuilding process is called resilvering and can take a week or longer with large hard drives in a busy system. And to make matters worse, while the resilvering is happening, it introduces a heavy load on the remaining drives, which can make them fail. RAID Z2 and RAID Z3 mitigate this problem by having two and three parity drives. However, parity computations are even more complex, so resilvering RAID Z2 and RAID Z3 takes even longer. During resilvering, your users will probably complain of a slow system. On the other hand, resilvering mirror drives is much faster as it is simply a copy of the data. Therefore, mirrored z-pools are usually recommended for most purposes. Also, you should not have more than 8 or 9 disks in any RAID-Z VDEV. Identical drives are scary. 
We have had several occasions where multiple SSDs from the same manufacturer that were purchased at the same time failed within a few days of each other. On one occasion, two Kingston data center drives failed in a rapid succession. On another occasion, Intel data center drives failed after they hit a certain write count due to a firmware bug. We ended up spending a weekend upgrading Intel SSD firmware to avoid further drive deaths. Recently, we had to build a mirror Z-Pool with four drives. We used three different SSD models of the same size. Two Micron Enterprise drives, one Intel data center drive, and one Samsung Enterprise drive. We put the Micron and Intel in one mirror VDEV and Micron and Samsung in the other. That way, it's extremely unlikely that they would die at the same time. Size your spinning pools appropriately to avoid fragmentation. Never fill your spinning Z pools to more than 80% full as fragmentation gets really bad and makes performance really sluggish. ZFS has no defragmentation tools, so the only fix is to copy the data from one pool to another, then destroy the empty pool, recreate it, and copy the data back to it. A separate log device will slow down fragmentation on spinning pools as all of the sync writes will go to the separate device. And that's all she wrote. If you're interested in privacy, open source tech, session messenger, Lokinet, and the Oxen network, please check out some of the other videos on this channel. And have a happy day.